Now at 9, a new beginning for a once problematic area of Bill Street. Tonight, we find out what's next for 380 Bill. Plus, the trial begins tomorrow for a man accused of shooting and killing a high school senior and mother days before her graduation in 2016. And a showcase of talent during today's Shelby County Schools Art Fest. Why, organizers say students should participate in the fine arts. Live from WLMT Memphis, local every day. This is Local 24 News at 9 on CW30. A previous nuisance with a lengthy rap sheet on the east end of Bill Street of violence is now gone. Good evening, I'm Annette Pegler. And its place is set to be a boutique hotel, which city leaders hope will revitalize the area and deter crime. Local 24 News reporter Rebecca Butcher spoke with a business owner, plus Bill Street goers on what they think of the change. She joins us live in the studio with their reaction. Rebecca. Yeah, well, Net 380 Bill has a long history here in Memphis, and recently most of it has unfortunately been dangerous. One man told me today that the building should have been kept up because of its history, but others welcome the change to a new hotel. I think it's wonderful for Memphis. Memphis has so much to offer. Our tourists love us. We need more viable economic spaces down here. This is 380 Bill, once named the Muhammad Ali Theater, it then became Plush Night Club. Patrice Bryant, the general manager of Sugar Shack, supports the coming five-story hotel to be called the Inn at Bill. March was a spring break. People from all over this country were in here in Memphis spending their tax dollars, spending money, you know, bringing us tax dollars. And the more that we support our tourism down here, the more it's going to benefit the city. The DA's office shut the former nightclub down in the summer of 2011. It was declared a public nuisance. It opened again in September 2011 under the Club Crave name and also new management. Back in 2012, 54 calls were reported to police ranging from narcotics, robberies, and aggravated assaults. After a murder, the DA shut Crave down. We need to put a lot of more businesses within this city so the city can become more lucrative and have more jobs to give these people that are out in these streets. With I spoke to a visitor from California on the coming changes. Today was her first time on Beal. I think it's great if they do something to make it better and hopefully that'll draw in people and they'll feel more comfortable and more safe. And the hotel is expected to take about two years to construct. City leaders downtown hope this will help revitalize this end of the historic street. Live in the studio, I'm Rebecca Butcher, Local 24 News. Rebecca, thank you. New information tonight. The trial of a man accused of shooting and killing a high school senior and mother in 2016 starts tomorrow. Quasi Corbin is facing first degree murder charges in the death of Minesha Johnson. Johnson was shot and killed in downtown Memphis back in May of 2016, just days before she would have graduated from Booker T. Washington High School. Investigators say Corbin shot into a crowd near Bill Street after he thought he saw the person who shot him a few months earlier. And continuing coverage, a Cordova woman facing more than two dozen charges, including animal cruelty, will be in court tomorrow morning. Charlotte Creasy is accused of keeping dozens of pets in deplorable conditions. 24 cats and one dog were rescued Thursday night from her home between North Walnut Bend and Timber Creek Drive. Officers say the home was covered with more than an inch of animal feces and urine in some places. Creasy also faced animal cruelty allegations in 2014 when her Tipton County home was raided. Nearly 100 animals in bad shape were rescued. New tonight, West Memphis police need your help finding a 22-year-old missing man. The family of Sergio Cruz told officers that he left home on March 23rd and they haven't seen him since. If you see Cruz or know where he is, call West Memphis police at 870-732-7555. Local in Arkansas tonight, the future of Arkansas's Medicaid expansion program is questionable tonight. The state house voted down its budget after a federal judge blocked the program's work requirement. Many Republicans who voted against the bill said there were too many unknowns in the wake of the work requirement ruling. Governor Hutchinson is pushing for a speedy appeal. In the meantime, a lot hangs in the balance as lawmakers try to find the votes to approve the Medicaid budget. Local in Tennessee, Nashville Mayor David Briley is responding to public backlash over the removal of 21 cherry trees in Riverfront Park for the NFL draft. The National Football League needs 21 cherry trees in Riverfront Park to be removed to accommodate a 400-foot stage and other logistical elements for the upcoming NFL draft. The news caused some outrage.
This is a backroom deal that had no transparency. Everyone in Nashville just learned about it today. There was no formal Metro Parks board action to decide to cut down the cherry trees. I couldn't believe it. It was shocking that for such a big event, and the city hosts big events all the time, that this would happen, and no one really was aware that the full impact of this until Friday in a meeting. And a tweet, Mayor David Browley canceled tomorrow's tree removals and said that he informed the NFL and the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation that the trees will have to be removed intact and replanted elsewhere in the city. Briley said if any of the trees are found to be diseased or dead when they are removed, they will have to be replaced with new healthy trees. The 21 trees currently located in Riverfront Park will be replaced in Riverfront Park in addition to adding 17 more. Also happening in Tennessee, U.S. Secretary of Education Bessie DeVos will be in Nashville tomorrow. During her visit, DeVos will participate in a roundtable discussion with families, educators, stakeholders, and local elected leaders. She will also visit Lead Cameron, a public charter middle school with a turnaround success story. Leaders say the school moved from one of the state's lowest performing priority schools to ranking in the top 5% for academic growth. DeVos has been recently in hot water over her proposal to cut funding to Special Olympics. President Trump later said that funding for the program won't be touched. In local education, good news for Arkansas and Mississippi students who cross state lines to go to the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Starting this summer, UTHSC is cutting out of state tuition for some programs starting July 1st. Out-of-state students in colleges of pharmacy and graduate health sciences in the dental hygiene program will pay a reduced tuition rate. That means a cut of $13,000 to $15,000 for some students. However, graduate and professional students will have to pay an extra $200 in maintenance fees. That doesn't affect undergraduate programs. Also on local education tonight, it was a celebration of the arts this weekend. Shelby County Schools hosted its 10th annual Arts Fest today at the Holleran Center. Students in schools from across the district showcased their talents today through music, dance, theater, and visual arts. More than 800 students submitted artwork, dozens of schools performed, and guests were able to make their own visual art. Officials say the arts have a positive impact on students' achievement and life success. Art is very important. All of the fine arts are. Um, the students need that. A lot of the students that don't excel in reading and language arts or math, they do excel in the fine arts, whether it's performances, uh, visual art, drawing, art making. It, it exercises a different part of the brain that they don't get in their regular classroom. Looks like a cool event. There was also an interactive dance demonstration for those interested in learning jazz, tap, and modern dances. Officials say between 1,500 and 2,000 students attended today's event.